In this video, we're going to see how to uh, how to prepare alkyl halides from alcohols. And so, if we start with this alcohol over here on the left, and we add SOCl2, which is called thionyl chloride, and pyridine to it, we're going to substitute a chlorine atom for the OH group. And this mechanism occurs via an SN2 type mechanism, which means that it's only going to work with primary or secondary alcohols. And it's possible to get, um, and you will get inversion of configuration if you have a chirality center present um, in your final product. So let's take a look at the mechanism and we'll start with our alcohol. And so the the oxygen is going to have to leave somehow, but by itself OH is, is not the best leaving group. And so we're going to react this alcohol with thionyl chloride to convert it into a better leaving group. And so if we draw the dot structure for thionyl chloride, we would have the sulfur double bonded to an oxygen here. And then the sulfur is also bonded to chlorines. So I'll go ahead and put in those lone pairs of electrons on the chlorines like this. And if you count up your valence electrons, turns out you need two more and those go on the sulfur. It's okay for sulfur to violate the octet rule since it is in the third period now. So a lone pair of electrons on oxygen is going to form a bond with our sulfur atom, which would therefore kick these electrons in here off onto the top oxygen. So if we go ahead and draw, uh, what we get from that first step of our mechanism. Now our oxygen is bonded to our sulfur. The oxygen is also bonded to a hydrogen. One lone pair of electrons form that new bond, so one pair of electrons is le one pair of electrons is left behind, which would give this oxygen a plus one formal charge. Uh, connected to the sulfur, this top oxygen here had two lone pairs of electrons, picked up one more lone pair, which gives it a negative one formal charge. And this sulfur is still bonded to chlorines, so we can go ahead and draw those in, and we can go ahead and draw on that lone pair of electrons on that sulfur like that. And so in the next step of the mechanism, we're going to reform, we're going to, uh, we're going to reform the double bond between oxygen and sulfur. So these electrons are going to kick in here, and uh, these electrons we kick off onto that chlorine. So when we draw the next, the next, uh, the next intermediate here, we would now have our oxygen still bonded to a hydrogen, still with a plus one formal charge like that. And now our sulfur is double bonded to our oxygen again with two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen. The sulfur is also bonded to one chlorine now, so one of the chlorines left, and we can go ahead and draw in that chlorine. Right, so one of the chlorines left here, and it's a negatively charged chloride anion. And then still there's a lone pair of electrons on our sulfur, like that. So at this part of the mechanism, the pyridine comes along. So if we go ahead and draw the dot structure for pyridine, it's a base. And so it looks like a benzene ring, except we have a nitrogen here instead. And there would be a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen. And so that lone pair of electrons is going to function as a Bronsted-Lowry base and take this proton here on the oxygen and uh, that would kick these electrons back off onto this oxygen. So when we go ahead and uh, draw that, let's go ahead and get some more room here. All right, so what would we get? We would now have our carbon bonded to our oxygen. Our oxygen now has two lone pairs of electrons around it, and we have our, our sulfur and our chlorine and our lone pair of electrons on the sulfur. And now we've made a, a better leaving group. So this is a better leaving group and uh, than, than the OH was in the beginning. And if we think about an SN2 type mechanism now, we know that the bond between carbon and oxygen is polarized, right? Oxygen being more electronegative, it'll be partially negative, and this carbon here will be partially positive, right? So carbon will be partially positive. And so now we can think about our SN2 type mechanism. Our nucleophile will be this chloride and ion up here that we formed in the mechanism. So that's going to be the nucleophile, and it's going to attack our partially, uh, our partially positive carbon, an SN2 type mechanism. So as the chloride attacks, uh, this is also, this, all this stuff on the right is going to leave, right? So the electrons in magenta are actually going to move in here, and then these electrons are going to kick off onto that chlorine. So when we when we draw the product, right, we can go ahead and show the the chlorine has now added on to our carbon on the left, and on the right, we'll, if you follow the movement of those electrons, they're going to form sulfur dioxide, so SO2, and also the chloride anion, so Cl. 
Cl minus like that. And so we've done it. We've, uh, we've substituted our chlorine atom for the OH and formed an alkyl halide. So this is just a, a better way of forming, forming an alkyl chloride from an alcohol. So if we, uh, if, we look at, if we look at an example, right, we'll just take something like ethanol here. And if we react ethanol with thionyl chloride, SOCl2, and we add some pure D as our base, we're going to replace the OH with our chlorine like that. And so once again, if we look at our, our our alcohol is a primary alcohol, and so primary alcohols will work the best because there's decreased steric hindrance. And we don't have to worry about stereochemistry since we don't have any chirality centers in our product. Let's look at a way to form an alkyl bromide. So we just formed an alkyl chloride. Let's look at the general, the general reaction for forming and, uh, an alkyl bromide here. So I go ahead and have my, my alcohol. And I react that with phosphorus tribromide, so PBr3. And I'm going to get uh, the OH group is going to leave, and I'm going to put a bromine in its place. And once again, this mechanism is an SN2 type mechanism, so primary or secondary alcohols only. And possible inversion of configuration uh, for your products, depending on whether chirality centers are present or not. So another SN2 mechanism. And again, we, we, we need to use phosphorus tribromide because the OH group is not the best leaving group. So when we look at the mechanism, right, when we look at this mechanism here, let's go ahead and show that lone pair of electrons better like that. Uh, we have phosphorus tribromide. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the dot structure. So we, we would have these bromines here with lone pairs of electrons, and there's three of them. So I'll go ahead and put in those bromines. And we still have two more valence electrons to account for, and those would go on our phosphorus like that. So the first step, it's, it's analogous to our, to our previous mechanism, right? Lone pair of electrons on oxygen are going to form a, a, a bond with phosphorus, and that would kick these electrons off onto one of the bromines. So I just chose that one. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. And so when we show, we show the result of that, we would now have our oxygen bonded to a phosphorus. The oxygen is still bonded to a hydrogen. There's still a lone pair of electrons left behind in this oxygen, which give this oxygen a plus one formal charge. And the phosphorus is now bonded to only two bromines, right? So we can show the phosphorus bonded to only two bromines here. So I can go ahead and put those in, and I can put in the lone pair of electrons on phosphorus as well. And so we lost one of our bromines, and, uh, and that formed a bromide anion, right? So we go ahead and draw in our our bromide anion here. And once again, we've made a better leaving group. So all the stuff here on the right is a better leaving group than the OH. And so we can think about our SN2 type mechanism, right? Where, where once again, the, the carbon, this carbon right here, is going to be electrophilic. So it wants negatively charged electrons, which it could get from the bromide anion. So nucleophilic attack. And then that would kick these electrons in here off onto your oxygen. And we can go ahead and show our products. All right, so when we draw the product, all we need to do now is show we have substituted, right? The bromine is now attached to the carbon like that. And our other product would be, right, there'd be a, a hydrogen attached to an oxygen, and the oxygen would be attached to, to uh, phosphorus, and the phosphorus is attached to two bromines like that. So we've uh, we formed our alkyl bromide. So if we if we just show a quick example, once again we'll start with ethanol. If we wanted to convert ethanol into ethyl bromide, uh, all we would have to do is add phosphorus tribromide like that, and of course we're going to replace the OH uh, with a bromine. And so that's that's uh, one way to prepare alkyl halides from alcohols.